Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. All right, today I'm gonna to talk about T-Mobile Home Internet and adding your own external router to it and some of the problems that people have had, uh, namely with speed, once they do that. And so this here is the Arcadian KVD21 gateway, but this same information applies to the Nokia uh, gray cylinder, some people call it the trash can gateway. It's the same information really um, out there. So, you know, the number one thing to understand one is that T-Mobile doesn't seem to really be set up um, for you from a settings options and and uh, capability standpoint of really being set up well to add your own router but I've done it successfully lots of people have done it successfully so um, I do encourage it for people that really want to have more control over their network and um, you know doing things like assigning uh, static IP addresses or um, you know setting up parental controls that kind of stuff you're going to have more uh, authority with your own uh, router system and the other thing is if you have uh, an existing system and let's say you have your personal router and you have a, a cable modem or whatnot you want to just literally unplug your main ethernet cable from your uh, existing router take it out of your xfinity or spectrum or whatever uh, modem and plug it into this and in general it will work um, you know if you do that most of the time uh, the internet will come back on and, and work um, but there are some problems that you run into so let's talk about those so one of them is IP addresses all of the T-Mobile ones use a 192.168.12.1 as their gateway address and then they enumerate up from there so a 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 for all the devices that are connected to it either through ethernet or through wi-fi so when you plug in your router uh, the gateway is going to try to assign it uh, an address in that range so if you have it set up as um, you know getting a um, ip address from the the gateway it will get that and um, that will uh, work and then your network your local area network could have a different address like you know mine might be a 192.168.0.1234567891010 and, and that's okay but if you have your device set up as like a static IP address you want to make sure that it's in that dot twelve dot something range so that it matches with the gateway otherwise you'll get uh, IP errors and on the same vein, if you have some devices connected to this through the Wi-Fi or through the Ethernet, and you have other devices through your own router, you want to make sure that their IP addresses don't conflict. So you don't want your own router running DHCP and assigning the same range of IP addresses. Then you'll get some IP conflicts and you can get uh, issues there. So the other thing that, um, you know, the main reason I use an external router is actually for Wi-Fi coverage. So I have a mesh system, meaning I have actually six routers that are all connected together to Asus AI mesh uh, system. And I'm using that to get coverage over several acres of, um, of my property with lots of buildings. So that's something that obviously their one gateway cannot do and I need it for the Wi-Fi coverage but I also like it for um, management and um, uh, parental controls and some other settings that I have in there. So I have not gotten the half speed um, cut. Some of the people have even reported even worse speed reductions, meaning if they connect to Wi-Fi of this guy or they connect Ethernet uh, directly to their computer to the gateway, you know, they plug that in their computer, well, you know, let's say they get 200 megabits per second and then they plug it in um, to their personal router and then they connect to their personal router and they say well now I only get 100 megabits per second what what happened um, and I guess that's a kind of a, a coincidental example I use because I used 100 megabits per second if you have um, something like 100 megabits per second you want to make sure that your your uh, ethernet cable is at least uh, cat 5e or higher number 
to make sure that it can support gigabit speed. So if you have uh, a really old cable that is lower quality um, or has issues, then that it might actually limit your speeds to 100. So that's one thing to watch for. But I haven't seen that on the T-Mobile stuff. So my Asus AI Mesh router um, gets the same speed either connected, um, you know, if I'm going through my Asus system or if I connect directly to the gateway. But however, um, I have hooked up my Asus system to a Verizon home internet and lo and behold, I ran into that problem where my uh, computer's connected. If I directly connected to the Verizon gateway, I got uh, much faster speeds and I got about half speed when I connected my Asus uh, system to it. So that encouraged me to look into it and try to figure out what's going on. I started playing with the settings. And what I found is um, turning off DHCP server on one of the units actually got my speed back to where it was. So I don't know the exact details of why it does that. It doesn't um, make full sense to me, especially why it would do it on some um, pairs of devices and not other pairs of devices. So I wouldn't have thought it really would be um, that big of a slowdown. There, there's always technically a little bit of a slowdown anytime you go through that layer of NAT, um, but it it certainly shouldn't be half speed. So there's some kind of conflict going on there. Anyways, um, on the Verizon side, I can turn off the DHCP server on the gateway. And that's what I ended up doing because I rather my own gateway have the DHCP server and assign all the addresses. I had some static addresses, and I didn't want the 192.168.12 um, address range. I, I liked my uh, existing range um, for, for several reasons um, unrelated. But on the T-Mobile side, you can't turn off the DHCP server on here. Now, uh, I might get motivated enough to try to figure out how to do that, because there should be a way to do that, and I have um, you know, videos out there for how you can turn off like the Wi-Fi on here, which is a good idea to actually do to take off workload from this. And that's, that's really the main reason why I have my own system. Like I said before, is to get the Wi-Fi coverage. But the other part of that is that you're able to take that workload off of the gateway. And these gateways really seem to be overworked or undercooled, whichever way you want to look at it. And they have memory leak issues. And so if you can, um, Take off the Wi-Fi requirement, and if you can have your own device do a bunch of the routing, uh, meaning it takes, you know, I have 60-some devices, and then my gateway takes um, those, and the um, the gateway only sees it as one device. It's all it thinks um, is asking for Internet access. So um, because you can't turn off DHCP on the um, gateway, you have to do it on your side. So... If you really are having those half speed reduction and you can't handle it, try turning off your own router's DHCP. See if that fixes the issue. And if it does, then you know that, you know, that is the um, the slowdown. And then as a fix, you can leave it off and you can have the gateway assign all of the IP addresses. And if you do that, you might want to uh, consider um, a cooling fan or you know certainly keeping it out of sunlight to try to help uh, keep it cool because it's going to have to do a little bit more work that way and then also strongly consider turning off the Wi-Fi because that's when most people are, are having problems is they're really loading up the device with lots of um, work between Wi-Fi and DHCP server stuff so that's what I found as um, some areas to look for to speed up. The other uh, maybe um, more common sense ones would be on uh, Wi-Fi. So the um, this guy has uh, Wi-Fi 6, which means it has both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi bands, which, by the way, if the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi is not related in any, any way to cellular 5G. Those are different technology. Some people get confused um, by that but if you have your own setup especially if it's as close as like this is you can get Wi-Fi interference issues so if your device is slow and it's uh, connected via uh, wireless if you have the Wi-Fi on multiple routers especially close to each other uh, 
and they compete in the in the airways and that can create interference and slow down especially if they're on a similar channel uh, Wi-Fi channel so you would want to um, do a couple things one either turn off Wi-Fi so you only have one Wi-Fi source or another thing is to use a, a tool like a Wi-Fi analyzer um, app on your phone and look at the uh, Wi-Fi channels that are present in you and if you're in an apartment building or something like that it might be your neighbors uh, Wi-Fi that is actually creating interference and slowing it down and so by adding your own uh, router that just adds another um, noise factor going in there so that would be another thing uh, to look at is Wi-Fi interference and then the last thing I'll say on Wi-Fi is for the 2.4 gigahertz band you want to um, pay attention uh, to which one you're connected to and typically on your devices computers or phones it will tell you what it thinks the Wi-Fi connection speed is if you um, use Wi-Fi 6 it combines both of the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz as one SS um, ID name it's a common name and therefore it's hard to tell at first glance which one you're connected to but when we're talking about the fast speeds you know 200 300 uh, 400 500 um, megabits per second uh, download speeds the 2.4 gigahertz is going to have trouble with those kind of speeds so uh, if your device is connected to the 2.4 gigahertz bands that could be the reason why you're getting a slowdown and that would also apply to your own personal router that uh, if it has, um, you know, even Wi-Fi 5 uh, combines those 2.4 and 5 gigahertz uh, bands uh, by default. So one of the solutions you can do for that is to separate out those two uh, bands by renaming, you know, for me personally, I rename it like 2.4 and, um, and 5G uh, um, at the end of my Wi-Fi name so that I know which one I'm connected to. So that's um, some thoughts there on uh, what I found can help. Hopefully that helps some of you guys. If you have another question or you found, hey, Nate, you forgot about um, this or that, feel free to put it in the comments down below. I do enjoy uh, seeing those, and I'm glad uh, my viewers are so interactive and uh, open to discussing and also challenging me if I say something wrong or um, missed uh, some important um, point that you guys would like to make. So add the comment down below and uh, keep watching.